Hey y'all, 8.13 day, it's 8.13, it's my day y'all. Woo! I just want to say I am so, 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 so grateful. I, I thank God, I thank my family, I thank my husband, my mom, uh, just everyone, you know, Patty, look, Brittany, Deborah, Prophetess Kay, Prophet Sandra, I'm, my goodness, Prophet Elena, Pastor Sheena, um, if I start naming names, I'm going to forget. Like, seriously, I think everybody um, who's been posting, sharing, reposting, Tiffany. Um, oh, my goodness. There's been so many people who, Don, like there have been so many folks who um, have been involved, who have been supporting me. You know, this is not just the first time uh, that I've written a book. Uh, many of you know that I'm already a, a bestseller. Um, but that has been with anthologies that I've done um, that have been, I mean, extremely powerful. I've also written my own books. Um, but y'all, this book right here, I just felt a strong unction. I mean, you, many of you know, and I talked about it in a live just a few days ago, um, uh, you know, talking about like how to overcome fear. Uh, because you know that there's greatness on the inside of you. Um, and I knew that there was greatness on the inside of me. Right. I didn't discover that until maybe I mean, it was years ago that I knew that. But I didn't um, push to uh, really understand my purpose until about three and a half years ago. Um, just something I think actually it was when I turned 30, which is interesting because Jesus started his ministry um, at age 30. And the reason why even this birthday is so important to me is so significant to me. I mean, for one, I made it another year. And every day that I make it, I am grateful. You know, I'm constantly like, just Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. That is the first thing that I try to remember to say, even before I pick up my phone and start scrolling is, Lord, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for another day to be alive, y'all. It is a great day to be alive. And uh, I mentioned even in my post, uh, on here is last year, literally right around this time, I had just given birth to Jesse, who turned one two days ago, right? On Wednesday, he turned one. Uh, well, no, sorry, a few days ago. So this time last year, I had just been discharged from the hospital. I'm adjusting. I was adjusting, you know, to the routine. This, he's my third child. It's not, you know, it's not new to me or anything like that, but it's a big adjustment. It's a big transition for any family when you um, when you bring home a baby. Right. And everything had been fine. He came three weeks early. You know, um, I, I mentioned that in the post, like I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't ready until I had no choice. Right. Uh, and I said in my post, once the lady, like I didn't want to push, the epidural wasn't working because I chose the epidural, but the epidural chose not to work. OK. And once she <laughs> I was not pushing. And once that midwife said, look, the cord could be around him, wrapped around his neck. Then I realized that my pain um, is not even about me, that I needed to focus more on the bigger picture and the purpose. And that helped me to push past what I was going through. Come on. And that's a word for somebody is that. In spite of what you've been through, in spite of the pain that you've experienced, there is something on the inside of you that must come out. You're, I heard somebody say it this way. Your story is about you, but it's not for you. When you realize that there are other people that's connected to it, it starts to feel, um, uh, there, there, it creates a need, uh, less of a need to focus on you because your deliverance and you saying yes will unlock somebody else's destiny. It will save somebody else. But you have to make up your mind. You have to make up your mind that there is uh, something in, inside of you, a greatness inside of you that, it, that needs to come out. You have to make up your mind that you want to discover the truest version of yourself. Right. So even just going back to that story, once she told me that something was going on on the inside or could be going on, I really started to push until um, he came out. All right. Until I knew that he was OK and the core wasn't wrapped around his neck. And, and, you know, I felt some type of way that she told me that. But you know what? It got him out because sometimes people need to say something that provokes 
you and removes the scales off of your eyes. Many times we actually need somebody to lead us out of bondage um, or to lead us out of the, our comfort zones even though your comfort zone might be toxic for you, even though your comfort zone may not even be good for you. Many times we can be so connected to it because it's a familiar place to be. Even the children of Israel wanted to go back to Egypt, right? Because Egypt was still in their minds. Because Egypt was still in their minds. And y'all, I'm going back and forth, but y'all, this book right here, Pureography, is about getting Egypt out of your mind. It's about getting, it's about you discovering the truest version of yourself instead of being um, only acquainted and connected to the pain filled version of you. There is purpose on the inside of you that is waiting and needs to come out. So uh, my baby came out, right? I pushed him out because I realized that his life was contingent upon my yes and my push past the pain that I was experiencing. I, we stayed in the hospital for about three days. Then, uh, we, you know, they have now they have those um, those quick follow up visits where you, they see the infant pretty much like the, you know, the next day or so or the, within two days. They, his temperatures weren't regulating. So he had to go back to the hospital until they did tests and he went through pain. It was just so, it was so excru excruciating for me to see my infant going through pain, right? Um, but not only that, you know, everything is fine with him. Get back home, trying to get into a routine. Suddenly in the middle of the night, I start having these severe thunderclap type of headaches. And I mean, they were so bad. It was excruciating. Um, it made no sense. I didn't have any headaches or issues during my pregnancy. And then suddenly I'm having these headaches. So I started to rationalize um, that maybe it's just because I'm sleep deprived, right? Like I'm not getting sleep. I have an infinite home. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just sleep deprived. Usually I do get headaches when I don't get enough sleep. The headaches were so bad. I mean, they were so bad. And then suddenly uh, when I would get up, I would, you know, like I was about to fall on the floor. I was about to pass out. So I'm like, okay, no, something, something is wrong here. And even I was, I was talking to my husband about it and, and my mom about it, who helps us out. Um, we didn't think like it was something significant or severe. It was just like, oh, maybe you need to just sit up more uh, instead of laying down because those symptoms would come, come upon me every time I would lay down. You know, I was going through y'all a serious attack. It was a serious ailment. So finally, um, we actually, I went to the ER, I mean, the uh, urgent care. They didn't know what was going on. I went to the ER. My blood pressure started to go through the roof, like 150s, 170s, to the point that they have to uh, give me an intravenous, um, I forgot what it, was, what it was called, something to bring the, uh, the blood pressure down. I literally needed medication for my blood pressure to come down um, uh, in order to prevent me from going into a seizure um, and something else. I can't even remember. It got to the point that uh, they had to um, put me in a ambulance and transfer me from one hospital uh, to another one. Y'all, I didn't know if I was going to make it, you know, and I and I said, I'm not even going to cry about this because the enemy's defeated. Right. I mean, that, we're one year past it. But even as I was thinking about the story, I started to tear up. Happy birthday. I started to tear up and I'm tearing up right now, but I'm not going to cry um, because when I was in the ambulance, whoo, mm, whoo, when I was in the ambulance, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. And that was my first time in the ambulance, in the ENT. And uh, I started to actually record a video. I started to record a video um, to my girls, uh, you know, telling them, you know what, mommy loves you, you know, to Jesse, hey, mommy loves you. I've, I've always been, you know, like, just do the best that you can. Um, I love you, you know, you know, just, just words of encouragement. I just didn't know. And then something told me, okay, look, look, Mary, we need to erase that, you know, just pray, keep going all is well. I get to the hospital. I spend days in there with, I'm now I'm without my baby, but clearly all, you know, all is well, I'm healthy. Uh, they diagnosed me then with postpartum preeclampsia, which is something you usually deal with during the pregnancy, not after the pregnancy, but I knew that that was an attack from the enemy. Okay. Y'all this year, this year, I said, you know what? Um, 
this is a full year of me of me being here, full year of, of us being healthy. Jesse is healthy, no complications, no issues, even though he came early. And then, you know, God has been just even throughout the year giving me so much to give birth to as well. Let me tell you that there is something on the inside of you that you also need to give, give birth to, but that comes with you understanding who you truly are in Christ. It comes with you understanding your truest identity. And let me know, won't he do it? He will absolutely do it. He will absolutely 100% do it. And y'all share this broadcast. You know, if you got the book, let me know. Um, I want to do a raffle as well, give away some uh, some journals, some prizes and things like that, uh, because I want to be a blessing to y'all as you all have been a blessing to me. Your story is about you, but it is not for you. Everything that you thank you. Who, and let me know who um, who's on the in the chat, because StreamYard doesn't let me see your name. Your story is about you, but it's not for you. People are waiting to hear your testimony and the enemy is defeated. The enemy is not is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Tony Tone, thank you so much for dropping in here. Antonia, <laughs> thank you for dropping in here. Won't he do it? I mean, he, he really will. You know, so I'm just I'm just so thankful, y'all. Thirty three. Y'all, this is also uh, the age that is symbolic of Jesus dying for us and, and uh, rising again. OK. And and standing um, where, you know, he was on that mountain uh, with Moses and Elijah. Um, just the fulfillment of everything that he did for us at age 33. So it is special. You know, I'm just praying. I, I prayed this morning, Lord, I just want the, I want double grace, not just double grace, but triple grace. Another year y'all that I am alive. And it's interesting because many times it's like tragedy will really make you think about what's most important. You know, tragedy or when you start to think about your mortality, your mortality, it's like, man, did I did I do everything that I was meant to do? Did I leave a legacy? Did I did I set my kids up right? Did I teach them the right things or was I in my feelings? You know, did I did I just uh, operate out of uh, my pain or out of emotions? And, you know, what what are my kids learning from me? And I realized that this, these past three years, it's interesting, this number three, these past three years, God has been preparing me. He's been taking me through things. Even in the past month or so, I faced so much persecution, y'all, behind the scenes. But I knew that God was uh, preparing me for such a time as this. And not only did I over, yes, we I over, overcame death because of his grace, but I needed um, death to my flesh and death to my ego because I realized that I was trying to keep many times my ego alive and self-protect and um, just guard myself. And, and many times as a result, I was more fearful. I was angry. I was resentful. Um, all because of past pains and hurts, right? And I just wanted to cover up and and just keep myself instead of giving that to God or seeking therapy or seeking counseling. And and many times, like when uh, we are not releasing those things uh, or we're stuck in our pride, realize pride with pride comes destruction. With pride comes self sabotage. When you're trying to maintain your ego, and you know, well, I don't want to put myself out there. You know, uh, you know, well, what if um, people reject me, or what if they criticize me? Y'all, he's been taking me through some things that has really uh, made me release the need to even have a reputation because I know that he's the he's the keeper of my reputation. He said, when when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. So it's not about a false sense of peace by uh, people pleasing. Many times we try to please people or we come up with these false versions of ourselves or we go into hiding all because of people. And by the way, people change, but he doesn't. He stays the same. He's the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. So we don't even have to worry about people and maintaining a certain reputation in the family uh, or outside of the family. It really doesn't matter. So he's been taking me through some things. He's been allowing offenses to happen. You know, right here, he's been allowing so many things to happen. And it's really cultivated me in a, in a way that it's like, all right, no attachments to nothing. You know, it's really uh, led me to really depend on him as my source because human beings are not dependable in that way. Right. It's only his love that is perfect. Right. But if I get caught up in the offenses and and people's projections and things like that, then I'm going to be distracted. Then I'm going to be distracted and I'm going to be distracted uh, uh, from the things that are actually meant to develop me. 
Many times it's him that actually caused the offense to happen so that we can go to him so that we can be cultivated for the next level that you're going to. Imagine if you responded to every single offense, every single criticism, every single attack, you'd be responding a lot, especially as he begins to increase you, especially as he begins to increase you, you're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get a lot of that, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. You don't have to manage be a manager of your reputation when he's your defense attorney. Come on. You don't have to be a manager of your reputation when he is the vindicator. When the enemy comes up against you, he's the one that raises up a standard. So many times you, you can release the need to to be your own manager when he's a CEO of your life. And you realize that. I didn't even capture that completely last year when he saved my life. Yeah, then, I, you know, many times again with tragedy, it's like, I really want to um, not care, you know, as much. I, I really want to just, you know, do what I'm meant to do, you know, operate and be in my purpose and just spend time with my family and, and those things. But sometimes, you know, like we actually really need trials and tribulations and uh, those offenses, people to come at us, persecution, those things to come at us. And uh, you get to a place where you don't let it bother you. And you keep on going. Because even those things are a part of your promotion. Those offenses and those the persecution is a part of your promotion. It's not meant to prevent you or hinder you. But when you don't allow it to distract you, it's a part of your promotion. Even y'all asking for help is something that, whoo, it's like, all right, you got to put the pride down and ask for help. And I realized you know, there was a little girl on the inside of me that had just been so used to being with me that didn't like asking for help because I didn't like um, being disappointed. I didn't like, you know, being rejected. And that's many times why we don't ask for help. You know, then we become super, super women. Right. And, you know, misindependent and all those things and then become resentful that we're doing everything or we feel like we're doing everything. No, the devil is a liar. Come on. No person is an island to themselves. You know, so I just I, I'm just so thankful. I am so, 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 so thankful that you are here. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for sharing. I'm just I'm grateful to not only be alive, but I'm grateful to to know who I am in Christ. I'm grateful to be a new creature in him and to um, be connected to that version of myself instead of any version where I internalize people's thoughts of me where they thought I wasn't the one or I'm not their choice. It doesn't matter when you're God's choice, okay? It doesn't matter when he's anointed you. And it doesn't even have to make sense because he will use the unlikely. He will use the underestimated so that people will know that he has been with you. He will do unusual things through you so that people will know he's the one that's operating through you. He's the one that is with you. There is greatness on the inside of you, but it comes with you um, knowing who you are in Christ. Okay. Look, I, Tony, I know, I know you're in the chat. Anybody else, if you want to comment your name in the chat or right, Tony, I'm going to reach out to you and get your cash app. Okay. So I can be a blessing to you because you're a blessing to me. Thank you so much for being here. Tony, uh, Tony Tone, she's she's actually she's a past client of mine who's made so much progress and she can attest to I didn't you know, I didn't ask her to be here. It just God plants people where they need to be. And she's in California now. I just I mean, your testimony, Tony Tone is um, is amazing in itself. You know, but you all let me know um, what has been a blessing as you've been listening, what part of my testimony blessed you? Uh, what is an area of your life that you want to grow in? And it's all about taking a step and just one step at a time and realize that you are not alone. Sometimes we feel like, um, you know, we're lonely, but no, you're, you're, you're not alone because one, number one, God is with you. And also ask God to order your steps and connect you to someone who can help get you beyond where you are, because many times we need to be led. Many times we need to hear a voice again, going back to that story where Jesse came three weeks early and I was in so much pain that 
I wanted to keep him on the inside of me, y'all. As crazy as that sounds, I did not want to push that I needed to depend on somebody's voice and somebody's encouragement so that I could push him out, especially when I realized that if I didn't, I'd be hindering his growth. This is sim not only is symbolic, but it is literal that when you don't get delivered, it's going to affect those around you. Pain that is not transformed is then transmitted. So even when you even think about the relationships that surround you, what do they look like? Is there more division? Is there destruction? Is there unity? Is there joy? Is there happiness? Are you giving good counsel? You know, what's going on in the, in the places around you? Do you seek out good counsel? Right? Sometimes because we're wounded, we end up bleeding on other people who are depending upon us. Become healed, become transformed so that you can also transform those around you because we're also connected. Your deliverance is somebody else's deliverance. Come on, y'all. Like I, I'm about to get off this live <laughs> so I don't start preaching because, you know, I, I, I'm a coach, but I sound like a preacher. I love y'all. I love y'all. You know, God bless you. Again, I didn't want this life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Can I just say something? Can I just say we made number one? Can I just say um, number one uh, best selling author on Amazon? Yes, we did it. Thank you so much for your support. I, I can't believe I almost forgot to announce that. Literally a, a couple of minutes before this live, um, Patty, who is just the best, okay, spirit of excellence uh, upon this woman. As a matter of fact, I, I think I mentioned her name in the beginning, I might have, um, where when it was time for me to get this book along, um, God placed her in my spirit. And she, I mean, just the spirit of excellence on her. She is amazing with uh, campaigns. Um, well, you know, she's just, she's just amazing altogether, right? She had just done one, she, you know, just the uh, bringing everybody together to do a collaboration book and had experienced just a lot through that process. But as a result of what she experienced, she became experienced. Come on. And all you need is one experience that when you really look at the lessons, you then become you over time, you can become a master at that thing. And I reached out to her and she agreed to do it. And we started to experience some warfare, you know, even just in the in the book process. But what God has blessed, nobody can curse. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Right before I came on this live, she said, we're number one. Y'all, so we're number one on Amazon. We're number one internationally. Come on, like, <laughs> So I thank you. I thank you. And he's not even done, y'all. It's only 3.30. It's only 3.30. He's not done yet. You know, um, I, and I, I just can pray with me, connect and agree that this book spread like wildfire throughout the seven continents. OK, like a global impact. Um, I'm just so thankful. I can't stop smiling. My cheeks are going to hurt today. OK, and that's OK, because like it's just yeah, God is awesome. You're awesome. Y'all take care. I love you. God bless you, Tony. Tone, you, you commented in the chat. I'm going to send you a gift. All right, y'all take care. All right, bye. <laughs>